Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Wednesday, April 18th, 2018, episode 53. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, Okay, and yeah, maybe a little lulls. You know what? I, I didn't mean to read that. I took that tagline out, but okay. You can get show notes at istate.tv slash h053, which is linked in the video description. Uh, today's show. Well, well, let me let me let me do my little transition here. Big build up here. Today's show is titled First Take the Guns. Then take the homeschoolers. On this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed with Paul Gordon, Target Homeschoolers, Quantum Records, AI is People, Nanoparticle Doctors, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. California prepares to target homeschooling for government intervention. So, after California's recent slate of anti-gun laws, along with the creation of special gun confiscation units, well, I'd say it seems they're ready to move on to another fundamental human liberty, self-education. Why not? Or, in this case, what we're talking about is homeschooling. The legislature has introduced two bills that would target government intrusion on homeschooling. That's good. That's great. The first bill would create in-home inspections of homeschool families, ostensibly for fire safety, and the second bill would create an investigative committee, and they would be looking at the inherent dangers of homeschooling and how to combat those dangers. Now, that second bill, that's AB 2926. Yeah, that's that's the doozy of a bill. That's the one you got to watch because I'll tell you essentially what it is. It's the creation of an agit prop committee uh, that is what they're going to do is utilize psychological terrorism to drum up support for impeding the rights of individuals to educate their own children. That's what this is about. That's what that second bill is about. You, you think uh, an investigative committee looking into the dangers of something is not going to find the dangers of something and then cry, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, and and fill people with terror to have them flock to Calif to, to what is it Sacramento or whatever the capital of that commie state is. Yeah, I called it a commie state. I did that. I mean statey commie state. So all you ANCOMs, I don't want to trigger you. All the all the, the little statey commie state there. Whatever it is, I don't care. But <laughs> it's gonna trigger these folks. Oh no, if you if you homeschool your kids, you're probably gonna end up killing us all. So they're gonna flock to Sacramento and they're gonna beg their masters, please, please take more of our freedoms away from us for our protection. And this is from Fox News. So the first AB twenty seven fifty six requires fire marshals to perform in-home inspections of homeschoolers every year. Uh, and as the writer here adds, implying that somehow home educators are less fire safe than other individuals. Exactly. Yeah, right. Uh, somehow, if you're homeschooling your kids, suddenly there's an extra level of safety that you have to have that parents don't have that uh, have kids that live with them that happen to go to public schools. Yeah. No, what it really is, as any homeschool organization can quickly figure out, it's just a way for them to get into your home and they'll be ostensibly there for in-home inspections for fire and safety issues, but they're going to be looking for anything they can find. And there's so much code out there that uh, they're, they're, if, if you become a target for one reason or another, they're going to find violations. <laughs> 
uh, with AB 2926, this is the more scary one for me, much more scary, Assembly Member Susan Eggman proposes forming an, appoint, an appointed committee to, quote, investigate, unquote, homeschooling. The instruction, oh, I love that, the instruction committee. Yeah, the the agit prop committee designed to create holy mother of God terror around the whole idea of homeschooling would subsequently share its findings so that the California legislature might consider how best to regulate those families. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, the, the article, I'm going to skip ahead in the article, whole, uh, but, but he points out here that uh, according to 2016 census data, California now ranks 44th in, union, in the union for pre-K through 12th grade education. And remember, of course, that's out of 50 states, so that's 44. That's like the sixth or seventh, seventh worst. I, I don't know how math works. In contrast, home-educated students typically score... 15 to 30 percentile points better than their public school peers. Now, the article points to a quote from the NEA, the National Education Association, or the National uh, Church, the National State Church Association is what they really should be called. In their 2014-15 resolution, the National Education Association believes that homeschooling programs based on parental choice cannot provide the students with a comprehensive education experience. Scientifically, objectively, of course. I mean, you know it's it's got to be objective and scientific -able. Otherwise, they wouldn't say it. They definitely wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. So, yeah, yeah. I, I call, can I say BS? I'm, I'm going to say BS. They're trying to keep this a family-friendly show, so I don't know. That might be pushing the envelope. Scientists set new record for quantum entanglement shattering the old mark. Now, this is, this is potentially pretty big news, and it's way better and more exciting news than the story that we just covered. But the story that we just covered is definitely an important story to track. Uh, especially if you live in California. A breakthrough in quantum entanglement nudges the world closer and closer to quantum computing at a practical, affordable level. The work comes from a team of scientists led by Ben Lanyon, Lanyon and Rainier Blatt. They're working out of the Institute of Quantum Optics and Quantum Information at the Austrian Academy of Sciences. And the team's broken the old entanglement record, creating a system of 20 quantum bits. And this is from, I don't know how to pronounce this, ALPHR.com, that website. And there's a link in the show notes. Quantum physicists just smashed the entanglement record. So these are scientists from Germany and Australia that are Austria that came together uh, using a record system of 20 quantum bits. Physicists have achieved a new entanglement record, the largest entangled quantum register of individually controlled systems in history. The team, led by the dudes that I already mentioned for the place that I already mentioned, enlisted the help of theoretical physicists from the University of Ulm and the Institute of Quantum Optics. As a collective, the researchers... <gasps> collective? I don't want to trigger anyone when I said that word. It's a voluntary collective, so it's okay. As a collective, the researchers achieved a controlled multi-particle engagement in a record system of quantum of 20 quantum bits. Neighboring groups of 3, 4, and 5 quantum bits were found, found to be entangled in a way that had not been seen at such levels before. In particular, scientists used laser light to entangle 20 calcium atoms a controlled undertaking which took place in an ion trap experiment. Did, you, did they say trap? I don't think they mean what you think they mean. The particles are first entangled in pairs, explains Yelanyan, with the methods developed by our colleagues. We can then prove the further spread of the entanglement 
to all neighboring particle triplets, most quadruplets, and a few quintuplets. Okay, now, I'm not going to pretend that I understand all the scientific behind this. What I do get from this is that a breakthrough was made, a, a quantum leap breakthrough in quantum physics or whatever, you know, the, 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 the quantum computing path. Uh, has has expanded greatly, and uh, if they're able to create more of these quantum entanglements, then they can create more efficient systems and a smaller package that won't be as expensive. That's 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 my general understanding. So that's exciting news, and that's hopeful news. That is that is reason to hope and believe that technology most assuredly on so many fronts technology is 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 tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations oh yes and then there's this this is i, I this is i'm calling this your daily lulls i think this is amusing it's kind of terrifying it's kind of scary but it's it's amusing it's funny too i think it's funny what, what what do i know eu considers whether ai should be given legal status of personhood so long long don't kid yourself folks i i could be surprised but i'm gonna say long before truly self-aware ai has ever been created the eu is already considering granting personhood status to AI. A motion introduced in the EU Parliament would grant personhood status for AI. Now the intention behind the move is, don't worry, it's, it's not to give liberty to AI. It's actually to hold AI accountable for actions that harm others. And I would add to that potentially uh, and it doesn't say this in this article, but I think it's just around the corner, to tax, to tax AI. This is like Commodus, uh, or no, not uh, Septimius Severus, that's the guy. Septimius, Sem Septimius Severus is a third century Roman emperor who who basically declared everyone Roman citizens. He, he wasn't emancipating anyone. This was not the great emancipation proclamation of Septimius Severus. This was a tax scheme. If, he, if everybody was a Roman citizen, then everybody had to pay Roman citizenship status. And I, I think that's coming too. So this is from Slate.com. In 2015, an AI-powered Twitter bot did something a little out there. Avant-garde, one might say. It tweeted... I seriously want to kill people and mentioned a fashion event in Amsterdam. <laughs> it seriously wants to kill. <laughs> Why am I laughing at that? I'm a, I'm a terrible human being for laughing at that, but that, that really cracks me up. Dutch police questioned the owner of the bot over the death threat, claiming he was legally responsible for its actions because it was in his name and composed tweets based on his own Twitter account. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's, it's not clear whether uh, they're continuing. It's not clear whether tweeting, I seriously want to kill people at a fashion event actually constitutes a crime or even a crime against fashion. Probably is a crime against fashion. Probably. I mean, it doesn't take much to be a crime against fashion, so I'm sure it was that. Uh, but assume for a second that it did. Who would be responsible? The owner, the creator, the user it was impersonating? Under an ongoing EU proposal, it might just be the bot itself. A 2017 European Parliament report floated the idea of granting special legal status or electronic personalities. Oh, I love it. I, I love this. I, 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 I want to be an electronic personality when I grow up. To smart robots, specifically those which, or, or should that be who, can learn. No, it should be which. It's not who. I dang it, dang it, dang it. I, I put my foot down. They're not people. 
can learn, adapt, and act for themselves. This legal personhood would be similar to that already assigned to corporations around the world and would make robots rather than people liable for their self-determined actions, including for any harm they might cause. The motion, this is what the motion literally says, creating a specific legal status for robots in the long run so that at least the most sophisticated autonomous robots could be established as having the status of electronic persons responsible for making good any damages they may cause and possibly applying electronic personality to cases where robots made autonomous decisions otherwise interact with third parties independently that's i just read that word for word so if that sentencing did not make sense don't shoot the messenger because i had nothing to do with that sentence nanoparticles released by human cells could be key to early cancer detection so it's been known that human cells release nanoparticles for a while now researchers at the university of sydney that's australia to you and me have figured out how to identify these nanoparticles and this research paves the way for doctors to use these nanoparticles as diagnostic tools that could could lead to early detection for cancer dementia and kidney disease and and this is from sciencedaily.com researchers have established a method to identify individual nanoparticles released by human cells opening the way for them to become diagnostic tools at, for the disease as I just mentioned, the particles known as extracellular vesicles or EVs are routinely released by cells and play a central role in cell communication, sharing vital information such as DNA, RNA, and proteins. This, this really is at the cutting edge of our knowledge of cellular development, said Associate Professor Wojcik Szerzanski. Man, I have Szerzanowski. Shrizanowski, whatever. It's spelled C H R Z A N O W S K I. I'm going to go with uh, Shrizanowski, co author of a new paper on EVs published in the Royal Society of Chemistry's Nanoscale Horizon. EVs could not only be used to identify cellular pathologies, but because they carry essential information about cell development, we could engineer them for purposes of tissue repair cool stuff man cool stuff turk Wright claims 152 islets from greece and bid to claim aegean waters now this is not cool stuff this is one of them poop stories i told you about yesterday these when you see a poop story maybe at least inside i think that it would help if you if you if you made it an external uh let everybody know around you just just boo and hiss because that's what you should be doing for the story so the turk right continues its work to set the precedent for a potential future war with greece over the aegean sea after natural natural gas and oil was found in the area the turk right has been trying to figure out a way to reclaim lost territory to get access to the rich resources. The Turk Reich is now claiming that 152 islets claimed by Greece should really belong to them. And I, I could go more into this, but we're running out of time. I want to get some of these stories. So I'm going to go to the next story because this also, that's right, this is I have two daily lulls today. This is your second daily lulls. That's right. You don't often get two daily lulls in one day, but you do today. Priests using cell phones to conduct exorcisms. So priests are literally, literally phoning it in. And I know what, what, what the heck are you talking about, Paul? Well, you probably could figure out from the title what I'm talking about, but pretend you didn't read the title, and then you could say after I say, please, priest are literally phoning it in. What the heck are you talking about, Paul? Explain yourself. Well, Catholic priests are tired of getting the green pea soup vomit thrown at them when they show up for ye old execution. Eh, or excuse me. <laughs> well... They're not, they, they do show up for executions, and that's not cool, but I mean exorcism. The priests have decided it's time to 
enter the digital age with ye old exorcisms. I thought it would soften the blow by calling them ye old exorcisms. It just seems nicer. I don't know why. Why show up for the pea soup puke when you can uh, literally phone it in? So they're phoning it in and they're using their mobile phones to show up for ye old exorcisms, which is good because uh, apparently the demand for exorcisms is on the uptick. I kid you not, the demand for exorcisms is on the uptick. Yeah. So that that was your 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 quick daily lulls, your double dose of daily lulls. There you go. You could call this lulzy too, but I think it's uh I think it's pretty cool. I put this in the i science category. Octopus cells hold key to creation of medical wonder. Smart metamaterials. So researchers out of the University of Nam New Hampshire are using octopuses or would it be octopi? What is the plural of octopus? I don't know. To create a new 3D printing material that could be used to create smart metamaterials. And this is from 3Dears.org by tailoring their chiral geometry across two different directions uh, the scientists in this story Zhang and Li could design a mechanism that when loaded in only one direction enabled cells of different sizes to open sequentially that means the artificially designed cells can be opened in different ordering patterns and turned via a combination of geometry and materials as a valuable new design concept Zhang and Li's innovation could have serious impacts on the smart meta materials we use for for actuation, drug delivery, and color change. Potential applications are numerous, and that's from 3Dears.org. Why the Supreme Court needs to end civil asset forfeiture? Well, within the state of on-state face parameters here in America, the existence of Wow, I just lost my clock. I'm going to have to trust that I don't go over the 20 minutes within the state of state face uh, parameters here in America. The existence of civil asset forfeiture is one of the most egregious examples of the denial of basic civil liberties. So long as this practice continues to be legitimized by the judicial branch of this particular coercive enterprise, the claim that this nation is a republic hemmed in by the rule of law is largely a myth. So there is a case brewing in Indiana that is working its way through the Supreme Court that shows the egregious nature of uh, civil asset forfeiture and could uh, actually invoke uh, the, the 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 argument here. And you can go to the notes and see it is that it it could be the first ever Third Amendment argument before the Supreme Court. And I'll have one more story here, and then we'll we'll wrap this up can't believe I lost my 20-minute clock. That's never happened on this show before. I don't know how that happened. Don't know what happened, man. Big finance wages war on gun manufacturers and bid to disarm Americans. So there's a cabal emerging among the mega corporations of America that intends on using its market power to advance the anti-liberty, anti-progress, anti-human status progressive agenda. The efforts by these mega corporations reflect a reality that the 1% of the 1% they're overwhelmingly status progressives, which makes sense given the fact that most of these mega corporations actually derive their market power from government protection and in some cases government subsidization. And the finance industry there, one of the biggest subsidized industri uh, industries and also one of the most protected uh, is joining in the fray with efforts to destroy gun manufacturers that make military style weapons and two of those big biggest culprits are also two of the biggest beneficiaries of government subsidization and protection, Bank of America and Citigroup. So Bank of America is going to stop doing business with companies that make the, the big, scary military guns. And Citigroup, uh, uh, Citigroup is, is uh, requiring its clients, its clients to impose their own gun control policies on on their store so they're 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 requiring their clients to have like gun free zones and stuff so so that's what they're doing and that's that 
And that's right, ladies and gentlemen. You didn't hear the beep. I, I, I took away the beeps. I put away the sound effects. I've, I've gotten some feedback on that. And uh, decided not to use the beeps and sound effects anymore. Although I may eventually... I might have like a beep at the very end just to let you know that we run out. I might, I might restore that. But that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we've covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for April 18th, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream as well as the YouTube video. Or you can go to istate.tv slash h053. And you can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by, Stitcher by searching for iState. And the audio version, it, it, it has just the, the brief introduction to the show. And then it just has the 20 minutes of headlines. This part you're hearing right now on Facebook and YouTube, this doesn't exist in the audio podcast version. So if uh, you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show, and you'll also miss the very end where I, 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 I comment on the comments in the Facebook live stream. Uh, and if you want to be part of that, you should follow me on Facebook. I am Paul Gordon. Look for the one where I have the, the gold background. Although today I am live streaming on both of my Paul Gordon Facebook accounts, uh, which I'm not sure I'll regularly do that, but I might. Uh, don't forget tonight to join me on Is Daily's News Fire with the One True News at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle page, which is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is titled AIs Are People Too. And now we can prosecute them. And yes, we're going to be talking about the AI story that we talked about today, except the one true Niz and I will be going into a lot more detail. That's going to be our lead story. And I, we have other stories scheduled, uh, but that's the lead story. Sometimes our lead story takes up the whole show, and that's fine. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.